yo, yo, yo. I can't walk. <laughs> Bitches ain't shit but hoes and tricks. Fresh and Fit's a YouTube channel that talks to women of all races between the ages of 18 to 40 about what rich guys expect from them in relationships. I assume these women agree to appear on their After Hours podcast under the assumption that they'll gain more Instagram and OnlyFans followers from the exposure. The show's hosted by Myron Gaines and his trusty sidekick who calls himself Fresh Prince CEO, but his friends call him Fresh for short. Yeah! Myron's the star because he does most of the talking. Without him, they have no show because Fresh has a speech impediment. He doesn't really say much, so he usually just sits in the corner with a look on his face that screams, I am very happy to be here! Fresh and Fit have other content too. Money Mondays is supposed to teach men how to acquire wealth, but the two shows that I've seen, they just interview a businessman they either look up to or just some rich guy who enjoys their content, so he asks them to come on their show. Womanizing Wednesdays is advice on how to keep a man's rotation of women in order and Fitness Fridays is advice on working out. But the only content that I find entertaining are the After Hours podcasts where Myron lectures and berate women for their ridiculous delusions of grandeur when it comes to rich men. Because you're a dumbass. I must admit that creating a podcast where the world can laugh at pretty bimbos struggle to deliver rational thought when their beliefs are challenged was a brilliant. Just brilliant idea that no one else seems to have thought of first in today's wacky world of modern dating. For that alone, I feel I have to give credit to Myron and Fresh for coming up with it because I've found many moments on the show to be very funny. My what? On every episode, Myron always asks the ladies, Would you prefer to be a single mother, millionaire, or be young, 18, virgin, single. with the man of your dreams? This chick decided to share with the panel that she's a self-proclaimed millionaire single mother who recently divorced her husband after he was arrested for selling drugs and scamming who also cheated on her. It literally took her five minutes to volunteer that bit of information and when she was done, everyone on the panel just stared at her for a split second. Like, oh my, are you okay? In a desperate attempt to continue being the center of attention, she tried to throw a pity party for herself, so Myron asked her, You are a millionaire. Mm -hmm. Let's say you meet a guy that's also a millionaire or a multi-millionaire, okay? Probably knowing you, he has to be a multi-millionaire. He's attractive, etc. Other women want mm -hmm. him. Uh, do you think you can tell him he must be monogamous to you when you also have money and you have a kid, which actually hurts you as a woman? A few moments later. I gotta step out. Okay. All right. Let's take a Chris. No, it's not even not, but that ass is not even funny. Cause y'all don't know, like for real, it's not even funny. All right, we'll take a, take a breather and then come back and answer the yeah, question. Yeah. Uh, can I finish? I'm not even going to lie to you. I laugh out loud every time I hear that violin sound effect on this podcast, and it's used a lot. And this is the only girl This is the no. only girl that, that, that chooses uh, because she fucking knows what it is to be a fucking singer. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so... <laughs> <laughs> Myron and Fresh say the intent of their YouTube channels to help men navigate women, fitness, and finances. Yeah, I'd like that, but that shit ain't the truth. I believe Myron told the audience what their YouTube channel's really about when he said, when you have other girls, women lose leverage because their only leverage that they have, guys, is sexuality. This is why podcasts like this, women are fucking triggered because we tell you all the truth about you're the one that actually has the value, not fucking them. They get, lose their fucking minds. So girls will do anything in their power to shut down guys that reveal the game and expose it because women only really have one fucking trick. And what would that be? They're a one trick pony. Oh, let me just show my body and sexuality. Yeah. That's why when girls are single, what do they do? Go to the gym, post more sexy pictures on Instagram, etc. That's the only fucking thing they can do. Fuck you, nigga. So when you go ahead and you take that power away and you have other women, they can't do shit to you. They can't fucking stop you, okay? What feminism has done, guys, is it's inadvertently given the power to guys that think like us. Guys that have their shit together, guys that have options, guys that have money, guys that are in the gym that take care of themselves, etc. Women have pretty much inadvertently given all the leverage to the higher status guys. I want y'all to get in that top 10% so that you guys have your pick of the litter and you treat these women the same way that they treat the bottom 90% of men as expendable fucking commodities. Why are you mad? Who hurt you? 
Girls don't like it when they don't have the leverage and they get mad at guys like me that teach you how to use the fucking leverage. But you must become successful first so you can go ahead and put these girls in the same fucking sex zone that they put all those guys in the friend zone. Yeah! Myron tells women that high value men want a submissive woman who knows when to SHUT THE FUCK UP! And who must accept the fact that she's gonna get cheated on in the relationship no matter what she does. And there is nothing you can do to stop it. When women hear this shit for the first time, they naturally disagree with Myron and usually ask this nigga, Are you fucking retarded? What the hell's the matter with you? Some women become too loud and disrespectful when they disagree with him, so when that happens, they usually get kicked off the show by Myron. This happens so often, they say the chick got Frank Castle because Myron's supposed to be the punisher in these situations. You look like a clown. Who looks like a clown? You. Get out of here. I probably look better than any bitch you ever been with. Look at you. Look at you. You run, you run a show on literally. You look wild right now. With 13,000 people watching. I don't give a fuck. You run a show debating about and with women. What does that say about you? Pussy ass nigga. Each show has different groups of women who seem to have never watched the podcast before, so the talking points rarely change. Which forces me to agree with Brittany Renner when she told Fresh and Fit to their faces. Because honestly, I feel like when you've seen two or three videos, you seen them all. I honestly can't blame Myron for feeling the way he does about women because how he speaks to them makes me think he's either paying for pussy out here and or he's using his money and influence as an illusion to get laid. Myron says rich guys want a submissive woman that they can cheat on but women can't cheat on them because when they do they devalue themselves. Maybe a quarter of the women who appear on the podcast reluctantly accept this as a fact because deep down inside even they know all they can really offer a man in a relationship is just sex. Tragic. But when some chicks call Myron out on what they feel he really wants in a relationship, he's at a loss for words. On one episode, a chick asked Myron, I have a question, so do you consider yourself a high value man? Myron, who always hesitates to answer personal questions, took his sweet ass time to tell her, I don't even have to answer it, what podcast are you on? So she went on to remind Myron of what he's been telling women on the podcast. Going back on last so last time when we talked about a high value man you said that you didn't really care about education level care about being cultured right so do you care about those things or yes or no myron then told her the most important thing for a woman is compliance so with that being said she went on to tell myron Comes after so that. that's where you're delusional you want like a pet you want somebody you just want you don't want a companion or a best friend Holy what happened to no, men no, 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 wanting a wife or a girlfriend that was like a best friend no you want like a pet by that logic these niggas clearly want women to be like that chick from coming to america ever since i was born i've been trained to serve you my bad, I forgot Myron and Fresh don't like black chicks. I mean, hey, bro, if you want to date a bunch of Shaniquas, go for it, man. LaQuisha. Uh, yeah, like uh, uh, me and Fresh aren't really down with the brown nah, like that. Man. We ain't night Riders. Me and Fresh uh, don't dabble in the dark, if you know what I'm saying. Yep. For real? The chick who said Myron wants a pet for a wife went on to tell him. And it's like what you're preaching to these what men are like they're incels. Like you're preaching to men a dream, a lifestyle where the women are literally like you want useless. My what did you say? What that. did you just describe them? You described them as what? Say it again. Compliant. Compliant. Compliance. That's so sad. That's so very, very sad. That's what you want out of your future wife? A compliant? Mm -hmm. That's not it? Yes. Your first mm -hmm. thing is not loyal, not educated, not cultured. Mm, damn, Spiritually great. helped, like, ride mm, down. Shit, shit, you, like, that's so sad to me. Most of the women in the room cheered her on to buy Myron time to figure out how to reply to what she said to him, but instead of giving an honest answer, as it pertains to his personal preference, he just defined compliance to everyone saying ideally a man should lead in a relationship and change the subject. What kind of shit is that? It doesn't surprise me at all that Myron wants a pet for his future wife because Fresh and Fit has constantly reminded their audience that they share the same views on women as Lee Majors. What? Women are things. What took me so long to make this video was I found myself judging Fresh and Fit's character severely for these circumstances despite agreeing with Byron on a lot of topics. When I learned about the drama that surrounded their show last year, I prepared like 5 to 7 minutes of content where I just trashed them for it. Like the kid, here go. At first glance, I just thought the show was about two dorks who use money donated to their YouTube channel to hire a bunch of different hookers to publicly shame on the internet. You have a bunch of dumbass bitches on your guys' podcast and I get it they don't challenge you and I know you're a really smart guy but it's like I feel like you need to kind of 
just be honest and show people who you really are. Every time I see these niggas, I can't help but be reminded of Baby Powder and his assistant pimp from the movie How High. If it had not been for the Lord, I wouldn't have not a, had a nail, not a bitch coming to my life. Not, 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 not a nail, not a bitch. Nobody said that now, not like you say that now, not a, not a nail, not a bitch. And I still don't know what that shit means, but it sounds good about it. Now, not a mean. Don't get a nail, nothing. Now nothing. I now nothing out of there. Not a, I read. Man, shut the fuck up. I'm dry to smile. I apologize, Bob. I've never seen these niggas pick up women in real world situations, so I was forced to believe that the only chicks they're actually fucking are the shy girls who say absolutely nothing on the podcast. Until I heard one chick who's been on the show say, Oh, oh, how much, how much, how much did you used to charge when you used to be in this? You're asking a lot of questions about how to pay me. That you don't fuck the hoes. I have the evidence. I have all my text messages. Cause they got chat motherfuckers thinking for the dudes that are watching these motherfuckers, they got chat thinking that they 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 bag these bitches. No, they're paying for pussy. They're paying for pussy. I guess that's the reason why Fresh felt the need to catch up a sugar baby to pretend to be his girlfriend last year. You a, you a, a, a assistant pimp. You ain't even a real pimp. DJ Academics had an intervention for Fresh about it on the podcast, but he denied everything and even had the audacity to say, "You think." That because I have clout, everyone wants me for clout. However, for you, that's that's true. For me, it's not. I actually have game, bro, right? What? I actually have game, bro, right? I actually have game, bro, right? I actually have game, bro, right? Game. This is your alpha male dating coach. But anyways, listen. <laughs> <laughs> Do I know you? <laughs> Do I know you? I do a kangol. Well, it's inside. Spit in my mouth. Look in my eyes. This P word is wet. Come take a dive. Ew. <laughs> and I'm supposed to believe this guy's a player when his real name's Walter? Read my lips. You ain't no player. <laughs> The backlash for Walter's fuck up came in the form of a fuck fresh and fit campaign led by their haters and some fans who felt betrayed by them. Oh my god, you lied to us, how could you? Fresh and Fit tried to file copyright strike claims against every content creator that talked bad about them but were unsuccessful because YouTube accused them of abusing the system. <laughs> Sucks to be you, man! What really made me think Myron and Fresh were a couple of <laughs> Was for all the heat they have against women, they seem quiet as kept when it comes to talking to men like that. A couple of months ago, social media personality Charleston White made an appearance on their podcast and told them, We used to run trains on white girls. Uh, uh, <laughs> choo choo! Uh, we, She's got a Robin Hood. Uh, uh, we used to do it uh, without permission. <laughs> What did you say, nigga? So it's not like she came over and said, hey, I want to sleep with all you guys. Yeah. We said, hey, man, that white girl like you. Get over here. And then we uh put. Oh, oh yeah, shit. Yeah, 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 yeah. We just come in with dicks out. For real? Oh, shit. Yeah, Yo. yeah, yeah. Yeah, oh. yeah she. We're about to go off Twitch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> The fact that they paid Charleston White to appear on their show and allow him to confess some dumb shit like that with no pushback from them tells me two things about Myron and Fresh. First, they find direct physical confrontation with other men, especially niggas, to be quite terrifying. Because I've never heard either of these motherfuckers raise their voices at any man that happens to be in their presence on camera so far. Second is the fact that they posted that shit like nothing said was wrong, so basically that confirms to me both Myron and Fresh believe that. Bitches ain't shit but hoes and tricks. If Myron's the star, there's no doubt in my mind that the women are the heart of the podcast. When Myron's insulted on the show, people get kicked out, but when women get disrespected on the show, it's just laughed off. With that being said, I can't get mad at people who hate on the podcast like Brittany Renner who believe that. When you make comments like, oh yeah, no women are special. So no woman is special, but yet you guys have a whole podcast dedicated how to get women just for sex. That's all you guys are. So you're saying men are just limited to just sex. That's all they care about is sex. Yes or no? That's all you guys care about. There's no emotional need. It's just my dick come sex. I want a hole. 
To put a cherry on top of that, Myron doesn't even care if women have orgasms when he has sex with them. Okay. Do you feel it is just as important to provide and protect for a woman as it is to please her? Mm. Good question. Wait, I thing. need answers. Inquiring minds want to know. It's more. It's way more important to 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 protect her than to please her. Who gives a fuck about a woman's orgasm? It's useless. Ah, Wait a ah. minute. You said who gives a fuck? <laughs> Have a woman ever had an orgasm with you when you was having sex? Ah. Yeah, do you know how that feels but, to, but, for you yeah, yeah but like, i don't and, uh, like i'm not like in there like like trying to like make it happen i just like do it if it happens awesome if it don't like all right well for real only one ejaculation creates life and it ain't the woman's lady so it's the guy's right. so <laughs> <laughs> so you gonna just jump in if you can't say you're you floating myron tried to justify that shit by saying women get stimulated mentally because women need emotional stimuli and a lot of times that emotional stimuli comes from what you do outside the fucking bedroom, not what you do in it. You know what I'm saying? And a lot of the times, just from like withholding sex from a girl or not giving her that much attention, then for once she gets that attention from you, she's going to come just because of the fact that it's scarce. Perhaps. So you don't have to do all this extra shit, licking box, eating ass, all this weird <laughs> shit. <laughs> no matter what Myron said, he still came off with a if you don't bust enough when I get mine, you fresh out of fucking luck with me. Kind of attitude about the topic, so Fresh made sure to distance himself by saying what I believe was the realest shit I have. <laughs> heard him say on the podcast i don't agree mm -hmm. i'll say this no no i like I take performance pleasure I perform. <laughs> and making a bitch come multiple times and yeah. added to that as well if she can come multiple times i feel like i've done my job yeah yeah now that being said i'm not gonna use toys and i'm not bullshit no nope. my fingers and my dick that's it yep. however <laughs> and your lamp if, yeah. yeah. if i can yeah. please her in that sense and i'm satisfied too we, we both win amen <laughs> I wanted to hate these niggas with a passion for all the reasons I mentioned earlier, but it would be moments like these that would pull me back into watching more episodes of the podcast. Just when I thought I was out, they pulled me back in. My initial reaction the very first time I heard Myron talk his shit was... You're a fucking asshole! Because Myron berates girls who are clearly unprepared to contribute to the discussions he would have with them. I don't know what's wrong. But every episode I see you just screaming, getting mad, screaming at ladies, railroading like women who aren't prepared with all these stats and numbers. That these ladies are like, yo, you want to come on a podcast? I'm like, sure. Uh, turns out that 8% of all men. Was, well, how does that have a way to have a discussion? <laughs> just chill, nigga. It's not that deep. As I continued to watch their content, Myron said something to the panel that made me think twice about judging this particular book by its cover. You guys don't like what I say because it makes you feel a certain way. You guys don't like the way I deliver it. You guys don't like the directness. You guys don't like the coldness and the rashness of it. That's what you guys dislike because you're not used to people talking to you like this. Women are not used to direct communication, especially from a man. Once I accepted the fact that Myron's a selfish, pompous asshole who talks to women like Caesar Milan talks to dogs, I was able to see that the podcast serves as a platform to showcase how the average modern woman's mind actually works and hands down the most entertaining conversations about dating on YouTube. Myron's calmed down a lot over the past year and the podcast is a lot better for it too. The most positive difference I've seen on the show lately is instead of talking at women, Myron's talking to them now. He asks questions that allow them to use their own critical thinking skills to understand why rich guys will undoubtedly cheat on them in relationships. Like what? Myron set up one of his many hypothetical situations where he was childhood friends with the women where he grew up rich but they grew up poor. He inherits a $2 million trust fund check when he turned 18 but he pissed the money away on some bullshit. However, the women worked very hard to become self-made millionaires and 10 years later they see Myron at their high school reunion. I tell you about how I gamble my money away, I'm kind of broke, I'm down on my last $100,000. However, you really scaled up your business and you busted your ass, alright? Now, I'm going to ask you a question. I try to give you financial advice. I tell you, yo, invest in this and invest in that. Are you taking my financial advice seriously? They all said no, so Myron allowed each of them to explain why they wouldn't do it. All of their answers pretty much sounded like what this chick said. They haven't like shown proof that they can make those investments and those smart money moves. Like, why would I want to take that chance on you with 
like my investments and my money when you haven't done anything with yours except for blow it so with that being said myron went on to make his point okay just like you guys want to take financial advice from me you guys can't tell a man where to put his dick now this is myron being the asshole i mentioned earlier if you can look past that you'd be able to see that he's telling gold digging horse everywhere a very hard fact about life that they're gonna have to learn to live with because the reality is this Ooh. women are trust fund babies men are self-made millionaires so you got your beauty and your ability to attract the opposite gender up front. Hmm. We had to work to be able to earn it. So you can't tell me how to invest my money when I had to bust my ass to build this value versus you guys get it up front. A couple of the women couldn't accept that harsh reality. So one of them asked Myron, how do you say that we're trust fund babies and you guys aren't? Women are given their value. They must preserve it. Men That's, must create their that value. That comes from what you think our value is. Well, duh. Like, I'm sorry. If I was a man, I wouldn't want just a pretty girl. I would want her to have a brain. The on problem her. is you're not a man. Exactly. What you want is irrelevant. You're not a man. Since the beginning of time, men have valued youth, beauty, fertility, chastity. Those four things. So with all due respect, fuck what you think. That's not what men want. Then this chick asked Myron about self-made millionaire women. That's a good point. Men don't care about self-made millionaires. Yeah, because your money's your money. Our money's our money. She then went on to ask who Myron would choose between a woman that earns less than him or a highly successful woman to which he replied. I'll go with a girl that makes less money than me and I'll yeah. tell you why. Wow, women that girl. make a lot of money are annoying. Have you ever dated one? <laughs> they're very masculine. They're combative. They're, they're not agreeable. They talk about their job all the time. They're less feminine. They tend to be manly in certain degrees. I hate to say it, but women that are hyper successful are successful for a reason. Fact. I've dated plenty of successful women. I've dated women that are millionaires. I've dated women that uh, are famous and have lawyers, some money. Doctors. Lawyers, doctors, law enforcement, 100K a year, whatever. They're all annoying as fuck. So she then asked Myron if he wants to have more money than his woman to be superior to her in the relationship. It's not about that. It's not about the money. It's that I know that women that make a lot of money come with certain habits and certain mannerisms, certain characteristics that are just not attractive. They typically go-getters, competitive, assertive, dominant. That's a fucking dude, bro. He ain't lying. You can't make a lot of money being a, 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 a pussy. Mm -hmm. But don't you think some men are attracted to that? Not the guys you're attracted to. Mm. And also those guys are broke probably. Those yeah. are the dudes that she talks down some. to. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the guys that are attracted to that are trying to use it. Hundred. She knows the game. Yeah, yeah she knows it. It's a finesse. Yeah. I don't agree with every aspect of what Myron says on the podcast because he believes under every circumstance that Bitches ain't shit but hoes and tricks But I do agree with him on enough topics where I find myself too many times thinking out loud Well, I don't know, but well, that was a good point <laughs> But then again, there is that. Women have only themselves to blame for getting treated like hookers by rich guys. Cardi B made it official two years ago when she said, Both boys don't deserve no pussy. And from what I can tell, all women co-signed that shit when they said, I know that's right. Because of this, men with money can buy more ass than they can handle these days, so now they feel the need to make rules for women who want to get in relationships with them. Fresh and Fit are trying to tell women everywhere that, how loving, caring, charismatic, funny, talented, educated, driven, or wealthy any woman is, rich guys don't want to settle down with none of them because rich guys are too busy increasing their wealth and fucking as many beautiful bimbos as they possibly can right now. You gon' catch some. Most women are not trying to hear that shit at all, so I guess they have no choice but to continue taking dicks to their faces from men who will never love them out here. Like Charles Barkley says, fat women eat churros in San Antonio. That's why them big old women be eating no churros double fist oh they be double fist no churros man <laughs> rich guys know that you can't turn a hoe into a housewife the problem is there are millions of modern women who live their lives like hoes but don't even know it because no one has the balls to tell them that they are. In my opinion, Fresh and Fit is the best dating podcast on YouTube because they force women to acknowledge what they're doing out here no matter how much the truth hurts. When women get cornered by the truth on other dating podcasts, they just get loud and talk in circles so they don't have to publicly take responsibility for confessing their selfish actions. The reason why I'm so passionate about this shit guys is because no one on YouTube has the fucking balls to tell you guys what we're telling you guys right now. Yeah. They're too scared of being canceled, labeled misogynistic, get called an asshole, whatever. People don't have the balls to tell you guys about what the fuck is really going on. Well, Myron, I'd like to take this time to say to you, Fresh, Chris, Big Mo, and whoever else is involved with the podcast. Thank you.
for having the balls to stand up to these gold diggers on behalf of all men everywhere. I like you. You have balls. I like balls. And that's all I have to say about that. If you enjoyed this video, hit the like button, please subscribe, and tell me what you think in the comment section below. Peace. I'm Audi 5000. Those who wish to follow me, I welcome with my hand. Thank you for being a friend. And those are my thoughts for this video. But then again, what do I know? I'm just an old crippled bastard. Ooh, 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 ooh. I ain't too proud to beg for your money, so like, share, and subscribe.